free entry of Guild Hall Art Gallery. You see parts of the ancient Guild Hall of London, City of London, modern architecture, church, different styles. But this is 20 feet below us was the amphitheater in the past 2,000 years. So the history of cities changes over time. Remarkable history. How did people get along? Well, there were wars. They did fight. It wasn't all peaceful. But somehow, the evolution of society we've seen over two millennia, the interesting aspects that people can get on together. The symbols, rather vicious, the shield, the dragons. Did we ever get beyond this in our wars today? The old whole art gallery. It's in the heart of a banking area of London, Gresham Street. This is under London, Guild Hall. It's the London area. It's an amphitheater. It held about 70,000 people. It was expanded and covered in stone in 122 AD when um, Hayden came here. Now, 70,000 people was a lot because the population of London was only about 35,000. Uh, Rome, yeah, they had the Colosseum. I thought it was 55,000 at least, maybe 60,000. That was enormous. But Rome was a city well over a million people. So the difference between Rome and London was enormous. This was still probably the largest family here than all of the others. The arena would be up there. It could be drained. It wasn't because uh, there was a river left coming through here. And you can see this wood is genuine Roman wood. Uh, and it has to be kept in controlled conditions so it doesn't rot. And you can see we've got a, a place here for the slush to settle. And you put a slave down there to shove them up a job. And you could dig out all the sludge, uh, stop it from um, overflowing. Each side here, this is generally Roman stone. It's not made up in any way. Even the is Roman. Uh, and we've got two crab areas here. So the gladiators would settle down to march into the arena over there. Um, and when it was our turn, we have gladiators there, gladiators there, praying to the goddess Nemesis. Nemesis is a fortune, she has a wheel, she spun the wheel. If it was going upwards, you were in luck, you probably would end up going downwards. If you lose, then you have to keep on the good side. So this floor level of the amphitheater is 20 feet below the current floor level 2,000 years later. Going up higher we can see a copy of a Magna Carta, 1297 copy, several other books, including a book on football. In 1314, the mayor decided to ban football. 
guild hall, so guilds of companies, has been the centre of business and trade for centuries. In 1562, 61, this is what London looked like. We are 1500 years after the amphitheatre. Excavations record 2,000 years of history at this site. The Roman amphitheatre excavated in the 1980s and 1990s. See different artifacts, ornaments, instruments, bowls. Walking in history. In the 15th century, Guildhall area of practice. So the Guildhall Art Gallery is above the amphitheatre. It's free, free tours, and display of British art. Outside is the Guildhall. Underneath the amphitheatre. In the square. We go inside small sanctuaries of nature, irises, next to traffic, water lilies, fountains. So you might find something zen in amongst the streets, the traffic. A sign on the door of a church. Peace is available. Toilets are available for people to use. St. Lawrence Jewelry. Flags from the colonies, New Zealand, Australia. Paris Clerks Company, 1442. St. Lawrence versus Swords Royal Navy Academy Jorgen to the side So the architecture and the ethics are intertwined Architectural styles for people to gather Do they gather in worship? Do they gather for music? The love of music and pipe organs. Close to the Guild Hill is St. Bartholomew's Hospital, established in 1130. It's still functioning as a hospital in the centre of London. It's been used for a long time. Inside these facades are modern interiors. Staircases, fountains. Museum open for people to see. Ten to four. Gate, NV8 Gate, St. Bartholomew's the Less.
Even the small churches have organs. grounds, picture of modern and our buildings. The green spaces provide some sense of rest and peace. Plants universally provide energy. This is a hint that maybe our energy from plants for relaxation and peace are something which can go deeper. You can hug a tree. Coming out. The streets of London. Parliament's Hospital. Two thousand years of construction. Still cranes building more. London is forever expanding. Multiple styles, styles. One doesn't find many horses anymore in England. Taxis, pubs. Functioning of a mega city for 2,000 years means that things need to somehow fall in place. Hairstyles may come and go, and still people spend so much on their hair. East Poultry Avenue gives us a hint of what is in this place. The market is closed. food market and the control of hygiene is critical. Poultry Avenue is the side of a market. How do you distribute food to 10 million people safely, economically? Public notices on the changes for Smithfield, Smithfield Market also displayed. The whole city is one big museum. The corner of Smithfield Market, we see a cycle superhighway soon to come. City of London, Barkinshire.
the dragon extended so we have a living museum living, breathing, evolving as with a population also with the buildings old and new the essence of a religion is clear the Christian origins of a current domination of colonization are very clear although new forms of worship of chain food restaurants and modern architecture everything controlled by cameras automatic cameras the art of moving people around the city bicycles, cars taxis and buses a famous double-decker bus of the changes we see over time little spots of nature is something which I think has grown up more in the last 20 years. Some Helleborus, some herbaceous plants. These are the streets. All of which flowering under a British flag. Albert Consett, the companion of Queen Victoria, is remembered fondly. How many styles do we see in this mega city? Sustainability. Rent a bicycle, move from place to place. City of Holborn. Holborn Circus. Well, the bicycle is not being used right now. It may be used later. So in this meeting of buildings, meeting of people, meeting of vegetation from an empire, you can see styles of cosmopolitan London services running in many ways walk further down Holborn you can see further remnants of the structure of this building People waiting for buses. It's Chantry Lane. One wonders if the Tudor buildings and the Tudor family ever wondered what a Vodafone would be doing in their structure. But that's the nature 
of advancement. It's in the streets from Indian restaurants, tandoori cuisine, coffee dry cleaning. Grocer, hair cutting, Chinese medical center, steak expert, traditional breakfast cafe, fast break, Chinese restaurant. It's the cosmopolitan cities have all sorts. Offering different massages. Slimming massage, thoughts massage, Thai massage, hot stone massage, head massage, all the different arts. Touches of flowers. People enjoying the flowers. On the road, the world underground, the world above ground. Sibu's oasis of parks are also common. Making the city pleasant and green. A haven for birds. A haven for people. This provides fresh air and peace in the amongst surrounded by the spaces of offices, apartments and houses. Closed from the time shown on the clock. Here we have a collection of nine planets, Grahas or Caesars. There are actually five planets plus Rahu causing eclipses and Ketu, his tail, representing meteors. So the legend is here. One is the sun, two is the moon. Three is Mars, four Mercury, Jupiter, six. children to learn from different cultures. This form of decolonized education is critical here to make a world where people respect and love each other. Also to make a world where they understand the mythology and religion. The sun and the moon. 
and our calendar uses the Indian names, the moon and the sun, Sunday and Monday, sun and the moon at the beginning of a week. illustration. Mars. Mangala. Mercury. Venus. Jupiter. Jupiter with a B. One of the linchpins of evolution was the collecting of fossils. Fossils of the remains of animals and plants that lived millions of years ago. And you can see many of the fossils. These murex and volute fossils were collected in Hampshire by Gustavus Brander, the director of the Bank of England. He presented them to the British Museum and they were catalogued in 1766. Is this a petrified tooth of a sea animal? Well, that's what they thought initially, but actually later they found that it's a mastodon's tooth. So it's critical to the development of the theory of evolution, which would be basic for the social Darwinism and many social changes that would happen later. So if you're living in Britain and you didn't have ferns or bears, maybe it's difficult for people to understand how did they turn to stone? Why had they... what had happened? So Penant and his contemporaries struggled to explain the formation of fossils. Then gradually they understood Linnaeus's cataloging and the development of the idea of theory of evolution. Parkinson's fossils. She's well known, James Parkinson is known for describing Parkinson's disease, but he also was a fossil collector. Smith, it's important, as a canal engineer, he began digging different rocks and layers of rock as he was in engineering. And Mary Annick found the ictus's sore in lower jaw. The Natural History Museum, we'll see more of these. It's a small collection here in the British Museum. Small fishes. Gradually, people understood the history of life, the fossils, the constructed museums and buildings, the house. This is the British Museum. It's a collection of life through these cabinets. We see these vast collections developing to understand knowledge. Archaeologists became a field of study. The building itself is historic. As you can see here, the great collections of the British Museum. They have so many things. These seal stones, ceramics, sculpture, art. So in the traditional displays for teaching, 
could have books and artifacts. What a wonderful place to study. And we can still study today freely. Education should be free. These provide an opportunity for free education. Sources of knowledge and wisdom.